The Bible is not a buffet where you get to choose what applies to you. It is literally the breath and word directly from the mouth of God. And just as you hate to be taken out of context, then don't take God out of context. Not all scripture is about you. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God decrees this. Somebody say it won't be long now. What if we woke up every day and said that phrase? What if you wake up in the morning and say, it won't be long now. I don't know what you're believing for. It may be a restoration of relationship. It may be the, your mind getting back to a place of peace. But even if it's not in that place, what if you woke up every day and said, you know what? Just a few hours closer. Won't be long now. When they ask you at Christmas, when you getting married? It won't be long now. Okay, some of y'all about to get to face to this. When you moving out of that house? It won't be long now. Because every day that I live is a step closer. When you gonna start that business? It won't be long now. When that album releasing? It won't. Just because God said something to Amos does not mean that God said it to you. If God declared that it does apply to you, then sure, go ahead, apply it to you. His words sound good and it's appealing to the flesh, but is that what God intended by this scripture? 2 Timothy 4 verse uh, 3 and 4 warns us to endure sound teaching. When people will be drawn away by things that sound good to them and people will wander away from what is true and it will turn to what is a myth and things that sound good to them. Sure, he sounds good in this passage, in this teaching. We all want that type of encouragement. It won't be long now. But what, but what we need is an accurate diagnosis of the problem. If you went to a doctor and had a life-threatening illness, would you want them to sugarcoat the issue to make you feel good? Or would you rather they give you an accurate diagnosis along with an authentic prescription? What I want you to learn, what I want you to learn from this video is that every scripture is not about you, nor is it applicable to you. If all scripture was about you, yes, indeed, it won't be long now for Amos. If it applies to you, then, you know, and just like Jeremiah 29, 11 also applies to you that God knows the plans for you and plans for good and not to not of evil and to give you a future of a hope. If that's the case, then Jeremiah 44, 11 also applies to you as well. I will set my face against you for evil and cut you off, all Judah. Whoa. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 8 also then applies to you too. A thorn in my flesh was given to me. You got a thorn in your flesh? A messenger of Satan to harass me. You got a messenger of Satan harassing you? And I pleaded with the Lord about this. And God's response was, my grace is sufficient. Are you vain to think all scripture is about you? If that is the case, then Matthew 7, 21 also applies to you. Because many will say to me that day, haven't we prophesied in your name? And in your name, have we done many wonderful works? And Jesus will say unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work in lawlessness. Does that apply to you too? When you read scripture, understand the author had an intent and an audience. It was in a language most likely foreign to you and I. And you must find the author's intent on what they meant in order to figure out how it applies to you. Scripture demands that we also study, study to show ourselves approved and to always be ready to give a reasonable defense for that which you believe. And beware, beware of individuals that contradict themselves in the same sentence. John Gray in one sentence says that we need to know the things of God in order to know what is God and what is not God. People need to understand the things of God so you know what is God and what is not God. But then, but then in the same sentence says it's asinine to try to know God. 
God will not be conformed and constrained to your limited finite ability and capacity. You minimize him the moment you try to put your hands on him. That's why the idea of theology or the study of God is so asinine and sophomoric to me. The pride to think that God would sit in your petri dish to be observed by you and to be dissected by you is... The idea of theology or study of God is fulfilling the command of us to be intimate or get to know God by getting to know his words. The only thing asinine or, as or sophomoric is his statement. In one breath saying we need to know the things of God and in the next breath he's saying getting to know God is asinine shows who is sophomoric here. Theology is getting to know God. Theology is theos, uh, God, and logos, the study of or treating of. In the same sense, we get psychology, psyche, breath, spirit, and soul, and logos, the study of. Biology, we have bio, life, logos, the study of. Geology, it is geo, earth, and logos, meaning the study of. Geology is the study of the earth. Logos or ology is the branch of learning, a study of a particular subject. So when we say theology, it is the branch of learning or study of God. He is not in a petri dish nor in a box, but we use reason and logic to understand who God says he is and what he requires of us. And God absolutely requires us to study and be good stewards accurately and rightly dividing the word of truth. And for those who say, don't touch God's anointed, you know what, I'll do another video just for y'all. But right now, but right now, um, if you have an issue with me calling out false teachers, Jesus called out false teachers. Matthew 7, 15 requires us to beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, um, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. To avoid them, you must know them. And Paul, Paul demands that we call them out. 1 Timothy 5, 19 and 20 gives us an example. Do not admit a charge against an elder except on the evidence of two or three witnesses. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all so that the rest may stand in fear. Paul also specifically names individuals. 2 Timothy 4.10, uh, he uh, mentions two names I don't care to try to pronounce right now. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, he names uh, those two. And then also in 19 and 20, he names uh, Hymenaeus and Alexander. If a false teacher brings false doctrine, rebuke them publicly so others will know. And this has been another episode of Justified by Score. I hope you take something from this and learn how to apply it. And I want you to make sure, and I'm not saying that they're false teacher. If I'm wrong, call me out. I will listen to it. Show me scripture and align it. I will listen to that. But I want you to be careful of false teachers, those who are bringing heresies that uh, differ from what the Gospels bring. And this has been another episode of Justified by Score. Again, like always, I look forward to your comments and I look forward to your disagreements as well. Until next time, Lord willing, of course, peace and grace.